It has never been easier to start and build a six-figure business. Software is affordable and it's really easy to outsource overseas. Plus, we have so many options for free organic marketing, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Some of the things you may want to consider if you want to start and build a business. So I'm Kirsten, and I have built many businesses over the years. I have owned a gym and a mortgage company and a title company, and right now as a business coach, I focus on helping my clients leverage video marketing with the help of a marketing virtual assistant. Today, we're going to talk about three different things that are really important to consider if you want to build a successful business. So let's get started. The first step I think is the most exciting step and that's brainstorming ideas. Do you want to start a local business or an online business or a combination of both? What product or service do you want to sell and who is your ideal client, your ICA? These are things that are really, really important because if you don't get this right, you're going to struggle to make your business successful. So when I'm working with someone and they're at the stage of starting a business, I always like to find out what do you like to do? What are you passionate about? Now, what are your talents? What are your skills? Because in order to be successful, magic can really happen when your passion and your skills come together. It can make building a business a lot easier because you're doing something you know well and you like, and you're also using skills that you already have rather than having to learn new skills. Now, don't get me wrong, starting a business will require that you learn a lot of new skills, but when it comes to your product or service, it would be great if you were already really familiar with it. Once you're clear on what your product or service is going to be, now you really wanna identify your ICA, your ideal client avatar. Who is gonna buy your product or service? And I think this is a big mistake because a lot of times people think, oh, well, everyone can buy my product or service. And that may be true, but you really want to niche down to a specific audience. Because the bottom line is if you talk to everyone, no one will hear you. So the first thing, are your clients male or female or both? Is there a certain age group? Where do they live? What are some of the things that they already do? Hobbies or things that they already buy? The more you know about your ICA, your ideal client avatar, the easier it's going to be to craft your message. Again, your product may sell to a lot of different people, but for marketing, you really have to have a specific person that you are talking to. For example, for us, I'm talking to you because you're a person who wants to start a business. Our clients are business owners. Some of them have online businesses and some of them have local businesses. So I am always speaking to business owners. And for the most part, our clients are in service-based businesses. So most of our marketing is geared towards small businesses who offer services. Once you know what your product or service is going to be and you know who your ICA is, your next step is to do market research. And for some reason, a lot of people want to skip this step. But I can tell you right now, large companies like Starbucks or The Gap, they spend millions of dollars in product development and research before they actually produce something new. They know the cost of having a failed product. In this case, it could be a failed product or service. So doing your marketing research is really, really important. Who are your competitors? What are they selling the product or service to? If you're reading their marketing messages, can you tell who their ICA is? And what do you like and dislike about what they're doing? This market research will be invaluable to you when you go on to the next step, which is marketing. I will have to tell you from being in business for a very, very long time and owning lots of different businesses and working with clients in dozens of different industries. The one thing that I see that often defines success is business owners who fall in love with marketing succeed exponentially faster and actually enjoy their jobs a lot more. When you start a business, you often don't think about the fact that you are gonna wear a lot of hats. You're gonna be the marketing executive. You're gonna be the bookkeeper. You're gonna be the one taking care of delivering products or services to the actual client. You're also gonna be in charge of sales. So we all wear a lot of hats to make our businesses successful. But marketing is everything from designing your brand to creating your ongoing content for social media, your email marketing, your website content, lots and lots of things go into marketing. I think one of the reasons people struggle to fall in love with marketing is because it does require a lot of skills. For things like video marketing, you need to know things like SEO and how to edit videos. For social media marketing, you need to know how to use Canva and create great digital images. And those are skills that I don't have. So I've always outsourced those things. So that's something else to keep in mind. If you want to fall in love with marketing, it's sometimes easier to outsource things that you do not want to do. 
So the reason why I love marketing and the reason why so many of our clients love marketing is because we get to focus on the strategy and the big picture and we get to create content that can help people, but we're not busy doing all the back end tasks to get that content out. So if that sounds like you, I want to give you a gift. We have a free guide that's called Double Your Income with a Marketing Virtual Assistant, and I will put a description to that in the link below. My goal and my hope for you is that you fall in love with marketing your business because I can promise you it will ensure your success. Okay, so the last thing to take into consideration are the finances, the money, 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 and the budget. I know this is a word that a lot of people do not like to hear, but when you're starting a business, you only have so much money to spend and you need to spend it wisely. That's one of the reasons why we promote outsourcing so much because it's very, very affordable to have things done for you if they're done overseas. So when you're thinking about building your business, you may be thinking about a website or funnels, or if you are selling products, do you have to buy those products? So number three is creating a budget for your business. Now I know a lot of people do not like the word budget, but I can promise you if you have a budget for your business, you'll spend your money more wisely and you'll get further a lot faster. So what are the things that you would need to put in your budget for your business? It can be things like domain names, or hosting services for your website, or if you're gonna have someone design the website, or if you're a local business, maybe you want business cards, or will you need to rent a space? There are all types of expenses that can go into building a business. And one of the biggest mistakes I think a lot of people make is spending way too much money in the beginning on things that don't pay off for them. By having a budget and clearly defining what you're gonna spend your money on can help you prevent that. There's also this false belief that if you're making a lot of money, you should spend a lot of money so you lower your taxes. But the reality is that lowers your profit, which means it lowers your personal income. So we always want to be very strategic about our money. A book I like to recommend is Profit First. It's a fantastic book that I recommend to everyone, whether they're starting their business or they've been building their business for several years. Because one of the things that no one tells you is, is my business profitable compared to other businesses in my industry? And in this book, he actually gives you charts that talks about, you know, if your business is zero to 250,000, what should your revenue be? If your business is between zero and 250,000, what should you set aside for taxes? What would your profit margin be? What should your owner's compensation be? What should your expenses be? So this is a great chart to review and I highly recommend it. The second thing I often recommend is a budgeting software. I recommend youneedabudget.com. Yes, youneedabudget.com. And I'll put a link in the description below. The reason I love a budgeting software is it helps you plan where you're gonna spend your money. If you're using QuickBooks or Quicken or anything like that, bookkeeping software is amazing and very much needed. However, you're tracking what you've already spent. And that's great for tax purposes, but the reality is it's not great for planning and that's where budgeting software can come in. Between the book Profit First and the budgeting software, you need a budget.com, you'll have a great jump on your budgeting and your finances. And again, that's gonna help you make your business more successful because you're spending money on things that you need and not wasting money on things that you don't. I hope you found this video helpful. If you're new here, please subscribe, ring the bell to get notified, and I'll see you in the next video.